welcome to our exploration of Norway. A Scandinavian gem renowned for its breathtaking coastline, boasting over 320,000 islands and islets, and standing as one of the world's northmost countries. With its rugged terrain and majestic mountains, Norway paints a picture of natural beauty. Yet, beneath this scenic facade lies a story of unparalleled prosperity and resilience. As the Industrial Revolution swept across Europe, Norway grappled with harsh winters and geographic challenges that stifled its progress. With agriculture hampered and communication hindered, Norway struggled to keep pace with its neighbors. Faced with economic ruin and famine, many sought refuge in the promise of a new life across the Atlantic in the United States. Fast forward to the present day, and Norway stands as a beacon of prosperity, ranking as the second wealthiest nation globally, excluding micronations. Its sovereign wealth fund is a cornerstone of global investment, symbolizing its financial prowess. Moreover, Norway consistently earns accolades as the world's most democratic nation, with its citizens enjoying high levels of happiness and quality of life. Many nations have sought to emulate Norway's success, only to falter and find themselves in deeper impoverishment. So, what sets Norway apart? How did this once struggling nation ascend to such remarkable heights of wealth and well-being? Join us as we delve into Norway's extraordinary journey. In 1905, when Norway gained independence from Sweden, it remained largely underdeveloped and economically disadvantaged. Its primary economic activities revolved around exporting raw materials such as timber, fish, and minerals, which contrasted starkly with the rapidly industrializing nations to its south. However, Norway did possess some advantages stemming from its recent history. Over the previous half century, Norway had developed the world's fourth largest merchant fleet, capitalizing on the era of free international trade. This not only provided valuable expertise in shipping, trade, and technology, but also served as a significant source of foreign currency. Additionally, Norway had established a robust parliamentary system during its struggle for independence, leading to the adoption of universal suffrage, workers' rights, and extensive social reforms. This distributed political power and system of checks and balances laid the foundation for future prosperity. Furthermore, Norway's harsh geography, while challenging, facilitated the generation of abundant and inexpensive hydroelectricity, laying the groundwork for industrialization. However, a significant portion of hydraulic power was owned by foreign companies, prompting the government to pass legislation limiting foreign ownership and preventing monopolization. As new technologies emerged, such as railways, roads, and communication methods, Norway overcame its transportation challenges narrowing the gap with its European counterparts. These factors, combined with strong welfare policies, public education, and a focus on public industry, propelled rapid economic growth and industrialization. Despite its progress, Norway's small size and reliance on international trade made it susceptible to global economic and geopolitical shifts. It remained neutral during both world wars, but faced significant challenges, including occupation by German forces from 1940 to 1945. Following World War II, Norway embraced social democratic principles, emphasizing the public sector and centralized planning while maintaining elements of private competition. This period saw substantial economic growth, with high GDP growth rates, low inflation, and minimal unemployment. Government spending on education and social programs helped shape a highly skilled workforce and reduced inequality. By the 1950s, Norway had achieved economic parity with its European counterparts, but remained an average performer. Nonetheless, all that is about to change. The Discovery of Oil As recently as the 1950s, the prevailing sentiment within the industry dismissed the notion that the Norwegian continental shelf the underwater terrain off Norway's coast harbored significant oil and gas reservoirs. However, a pivotal event occurred with the discovery of gas deposits in the Netherlands, prompting a re-evaluation of the North Sea's potential. Pioneering this shift in perspective, Philips Petroleum made the bold move of petitioning the Norwegian authorities in 1962 for exploration rights in the North Sea. Subsequently, 
the Norwegian government asserted sovereignty over extensive offshore territories, yet opted to grant licenses for seismic surveys to private entities. Despite initial setbacks, the industry experienced a breakthrough in 1969 with the monumentous discovery of what is now known as the Ecofist field. The government adopted a gradual approach to license distribution, predominantly favoring international corporations, until the establishment of Statoil in 1972. This move endowed the state with a direct stake in petroleum activities. Although Statoil has undergone a rebranding and is now recognized as Equinor, its legacy persists. Over the past four decades, petroleum operations on the Norwegian continental shelf have wielded considerable influence over the nation's economic trajectory, furnishing ample resources to fuel its welfare state. Government statistics reveal that the industry has generated a staggering value, exceeding 12,000 billion Norwegian krones in contemporary terms. According to official sources, the oil and gas sector accounts for roughly 23% of Norway's total value creation, eclipsing the manufacturing industry's contribution twofold. While the serendipitous discovery of oil laid the foundation for Norway's economic ascent, the manner in which the nation has managed and allocated the substantial revenues generated by the industry represents a distinct narrative. Many nations blessed with abundant oil and gas reserves have squandered their wealth, epitomized by the plight of Venezuela, a nation with the world's largest oil reserves, yet plagued by poverty. Hence, the question arises, what sets Norway apart in its utilization of these resources? Why Norway turned out differently? Norway needed the expertise of foreign countries to exploit the oil and gas reserves. But while foreign companies rushed into Venezuela, profiting handsomely and returning little to the country, Norway tried another way. Norway's political power was already widely distributed, making it impossible for a single person or group to benefit themselves at the expense of society. So the government was forced to make decisions based on the needs of the nation. As it had once done with hydropower companies, Norway's government decided that the natural resources belonged to the people. Oil and gas production would be a profitable activity, but the profits would be funneled to the state. The government also created a public oil company, Statoil, which would study and replicate the foreign companies, with an eye on taking over in the long term. The country also invested heavily in petroleum processing infrastructure and the education of engineers. Essentially, it chose long-term security over short-term popularity. The Wealth Fund Like the saying goes, the road to success is full of challenges. Norway's path to prosperity was no exception. As the oil industry burgeoned, prices soared, inundating Norway with an abundance of wealth. Yet, this windfall precipitated its own set of dilemmas. The subsequent plunge in oil prices during the 1980s precipitated a recession, causing economic growth to falter. Although Norway refrained from squandering its newfound riches, it became evident that a more strategic approach was imperative. Amidst this backdrop, the government pension fund Global emerged as a pivotal instrument for managing the surplus wealth accrued from Norwegian petroleum revenue. This fund serves as a receptacle for excess income and is entrusted with a task of prudent investment. Funding the government pension fund Global is derived from various sources, including taxes levied on operating companies, exploration license fees, dividends from the partially state-owned Statoil, now Equinor, and profits derived from the state's stake in select fields. Established in 1990, the fund was conceived as a safeguard against the anticipated decline in income and aimed to mitigate the destabilizing impact of volatile oil prices. Given the anticipated diminution in fund inflows in the years ahead, meticulous attention to investment strategies has assumed paramount importance. The fund's colossal size renders its value subject to significant daily fluctuations. The value of the Government Pension Fund of Norway as of February 2024 was about 15,800 billion Norwegian krones, which corresponds to more than three times Norway's GDP and just under 3 million Norwegian krones per registered person in Norway, primarily invested in equity holdings with a portion allocated to fixed income assets and a modest stake in real estate. The Government Pension Fund Global embodies a diversified investment approach aimed at securing Norway's financial future. Norges Bank Investment Management articulates the fund's purpose succinctly. The Government Pension Fund Global is saving for future generations in Norway. One day, the oil will run out, 
but the return on the fund will continue to benefit the Norwegian population. So, how does Norway leverage this substantial wealth? Unlike its Scandinavian counterparts, which have been compelled to curtail social expenditure, Norway harnesses the interest accrued by the fund to augment its annual budget, channeling funds into critical sectors such as healthcare, education, and welfare. Thus, while Norwegians continue to bear the burden of high income taxes, they are spared the specter of exorbitant medical expenses, embodying the enduring legacy of prudent financial management. So, yes, Norway struck it lucky, but without smart long-term thinking from previous governments, it would have squandered its oil and gas riches. Currently, oil, gas, seafood, and products from energy-intensive industries rank among Norway's primary export commodities. With sea areas six times the size of its land area, ocean-based industries contribute to nearly 40% of Norway's total value creation and 70% of its exports figures that surpass those of ocean-based industries in the U.S. Speaking of the U.S., click on the right side of your screen to discover why the southern part of the country is often perceived as a backwater. Don't forget to subscribe and stay subscribed, and be sure to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Until next time, thanks for watching!